Joining us for Krem 2 News 10 at 10, the Spokane Public School District is considering changing their school schedule. That change would shorten the summer break and make other breaks throughout the year longer. Article Hernandez is live in the studio tonight. Nicole, how much shorter would summer vacation be? So right now, summer break is about 11 weeks long. With this new schedule, summer would only be seven to eight weeks. Now, this wouldn't add any more actual school days. Students would still be in school for only 180 days throughout the year. Instead, though, they'd get longer fall, winter, and spring breaks, plus an added midwinter break. Earlier today, I found some families to talk to about this potential change. At Liberty Park, a more suitable name for Sharon Pepitone is Grandma. My grandson is uh, five and a half. He's going to be six in June. He's in the Spokane Public School District, meaning he might grow up with summer vacations different than the ones we remember. I think it would work. SPS is calling this new potential schedule a balanced calendar. It's in between the traditional calendar and a year-round school. Sounds like it would work great, but you'd still need to realize there's going to be parents who say, what am I supposed to do with my kids? The district says their child care and nutrition partners are already on board to make the change. So overall, grandma is supportive. She isn't just grandma, though. Another name you could call Sharon is a former teacher. When you give a kid 11 weeks, they forget things, and then the teacher has to reteach before she can teach the new things that the students need to know for the new year. Another mom, watch out, nice. Erica Wagner, love you, says she agrees with Sharon. I wrote my first paper supporting year round schooling schedules in middle school myself back at Sacagawea way, way long ago. Now she's actually doing that with her kids. Yeah, so we've, been, we've always schooled through the summer somewhat. Erica has her kids in a hybrid homeschool public school program. It always made sense to me to not have a huge break in the summer and have breaks year round because then you get to enjoy the north in the northwest in every season, not just the summer. This plan is not set in stone yet. The next time SPS will talk about this will be in August. And if things do change, it wouldn't be until the 2026-27 school year. In Spokane, Nicole Hernandez, Crime 2 News. All right, turning now to weather. The rain certainly came overnight, but let up through the day a bit. Let's get straight to Chief Meteorologist Jeremy Lagoo to find out what's in store for tomorrow. Jeremy? Tomorrow, Mark, I think is pretty good. Seriously. Right now, our temperatures are staying pretty mild, 52 with a little bit of moisture and cloud cover in the atmosphere. That 52 sets the stage for a somewhat warmer day tomorrow. We've got our storm diving to the south. Look at what it's doing to central Idaho. Absolutely incredible in just the past couple of hours. If you head over Lolo Pass from Missoula, you're in the snow. Missoula even seeing some of that snow right now. Sorry to laugh. I didn't mean to laugh. I just think it's kind of funny if you're stuck in the snow. We, on the other hand, have a little bit of moisture moving in. Coeur d'Alene, Hayden still seeing some of those showers. Spokane Valley seeing some of that. Liberty Lake, expect those to die down here shortly. Those move out and we wind up dry. By tomorrow morning, it's sunshine for most of us, unless you're in the mountains or over on the west side. Tomorrow afternoon, a few stray showers. Some of those might make their way into Spokane, but most of the activity stays off to the north. Because of that, 63. Friday, a shift in wind direction bumps us up to near 70. And then Saturday, a little cooler with yet another storm moving in. All right, sounds good, Jeremy. We'll check back in with you later in the show. Now to our night beat with a quick look at the day's top story. The father was shaken up after what Coeur d'Alene police are calling a brazen kidnapping attempt in broad daylight. Richard Swigert and his six-year-old daughter were waiting in the parking lot of the St. Vincent de Paul's Help Center when he says a man approached their car. It happened yesterday. After asking them some questions, Swigert says the man grabbed his daughter and tried to pull her out of the window. That's when he put the car in reverse, but documents show the man then jumped onto the hood of the car. Swigert says he accelerated and managed to get the man off before then driving away. Emotions just went through me and I ended up, yeah, just grabbing her, holding her, started crying, telling her I loved her. Suspect Peter Cahoon took off, but police arrested him several blocks away. He was booked into the Cootie County Jail on several charges, including attempted kidnapping and burglary. A federal judge dismissed former Gonzaga star John Stockton's lawsuit over COVID-19 sanctions. He claimed the state's medical commission was enforcing unprofessional conduct regulations against two physicians accused of spreading misinformation about COVID-19. Attorney General Bob Ferguson released a statement today saying, quote, if you want to practice medicine in Washington, you just play by the rules. These doctors must face the medical commission and answer for their actions. 
A man accused of breaking in and setting fire to a Gonzaga student's home faced a judge for the first time today. Spokane police say 32-year-old Marlon LaFoon broke in Tuesday morning. When they arrived on scene, police arrested LaFoon in one of the bedrooms. He is now facing several charges, including arson. His bond is set up $150,000. And that was your night beat. To learn more about any of these stories, just head to our website. That's creme.com.